dropping in on you. I uh, hope everybody's having a great week. I hope that things are going as planned. Uh, if not, uh, keep your focus. Look, I'm dropping in right now to talk about uh, breaking news and where I stand on it and what I'm observing to this point. Um, uh, some, some time ago today, it was announced that the rape conviction of Bill Cosby was overturned. Uh, and subsequently, he is has either been released or will be released shortly. Um, it is not yet clear whether or not um, they are going to retry him because you have to understand, from a legal perspective, uh, there is a number of different findings that the Supreme Court or a higher court can rule in situations like this. They can rule uh, that the the defendant deserves another trial because of a number of different reasons. They can rule that um, the sentence was too harsh and reduce it. They can rule that um, the conviction is completely overturned um, and depending on how that goes it could actually serve as somewhat of a uh, situation where the person is what's the term I'm looking for exonerated uh, in the sense that they can't be retried again. I'm not clear exactly how this is looking, uh, what it is, and that's not really that relevant to what I have to say. I'm here because I'm observing something that to me is true to form when it comes to us. I'll be uh, the, one of the first to say that I didn't like the fact that he was done that way, not because I didn't think he was guilty or that people who do what he did should be held accountable. My problem was that it's not across the board. And so I had a problem with it. Uh, at the time that it happened, I was at odds with uh, Bill Cosby's approach towards blacks and the lack of fairness and equity in sentencing uh, his response that if a person got uh, an ex uh, exorbitant amount of time for something s simple as stealing a pound cake, don't steal pound cakes. Uh, pull your pants up. All these things. And, 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 and I'm not one for sagging. That, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the way he was handling blacks was from a position that most blacks don't sit in and I didn't take kindly to it. Um, I chalked it up to him being older. I chalked it up to him being who he is. But as things come out and all of a sudden we realize you're not this moral uh, compass that you have been held up to be, then there's a level of accountability that goes with that. Uh, here's my challenge. I'm not telling anybody what they should or shouldn't do or how they should or shouldn't feel because we've got unique experiences in this country that make us feel a certain way. One of the reasons we can relate to this situation and we are feeling a certain way is because that's how we are. And any victory we can get in a place where we keep taking L's, we tend to want to gravitate toward it. And the idea that Bill is getting away with something or Bill is getting off or whatever and I'm going to get into this a little bit more in a minute, but it's getting off is our feel good moment. That's how we feel good. Here's my problem. We're going to have our timelines and uh, news feeds and all of that literally lit for the next couple of days surrounding the release of Bill Cosby. When we are collectively as quiet as mosquitoes when it comes to Mumbia, who is sick and still locked up 
behind being set up when uh, Sister Asada is still in exile and constantly stalked by the FBI hoping to catch her slipping so they can bring her back. And these aren't the only two. We still have some uh, of the, um, God, man, uh, my mind's going 100 miles an hour because so many things are going on in it right now. But uh, just so many that are political prisoners who literally are locked up for something they didn't do, most likely set up or framed, railroaded, and given exorbitant amount of times because they represented a threat, not because of immorality, not because of criminality, but because of their ability to unite a certain group of people, because of their willingness to stand and speak truth to power and to take action. You, you have to really ask yourself, is something an illegal action when it is being taken to stop an illegal action? And in there lies the dilemma within the philosophy of why these people are incarcerated or exiled or living in fear. My thing is how I feel about Bill Cosby outside of this video is going to be how I feel. Um, I can't really celebrate the release of a person who on, in all accounts, got down grimy and gully. I, 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 I can't do it because, now one of the reasons why I didn't just lose my mind is it wasn't happening with my sisters, at least not from all the people I saw. And that may seem callous, but I, I, I am really focused on my people and my concern. What's happening with other people, I can't deal with now because my people are in crisis. Uh, I'm not going to harm anybody that doesn't harm me or harm mine. And, uh, but I'm not going to war for nobody else but mine right now because that's where all my energy is needed. But I, you know, I didn't have a lot of energy to put in one way or another. But, I mean, you know, even in the penal system, one of the worst things that you can be locked up for is rape. Now, I said I was going to touch this. Things still have to be looked at in the context. And, and, and what I'm doing here is I'm trying not to be biased. I'm trying to be fair. So I'm talking about it on, from all different talking points. It, 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 and, and for the sake of being fair and putting it in context, Bill Cosby did most of this during a time in which there was a sexual drug culture where doing this was normal. So it wasn't abnormal to take these drugs knowingly prior to sex, it wasn't abnormal to have parties where this took place on a wide range basis. It, it was not uncommon for women to know or expect it. In fact, it was common that if certain women couldn't have it, they would go find someone who had it. So it was one of the ways that you were able to get down in the 60s and 70s was you had to have access to this. Now, did Bill carry this behavior over into a time where it was no longer uh, the end thing to do and uh, became highly uh, unacceptable? Probably so. It was a practice he had did for years. Uh, also, his wealth placed him in a place of uh, uh, certain types of security and, and, and guardian uh, guardianship and so yeah he he, he uh, benefited from who he was and probably continued on uh, was he exploited in the actual following absolutely it was bull crap they were coming at him to get at him for a number of different reasons they dug him up to get at him for whatever reason uh, I'm not getting into cons the, the conspiracy theories because I think some of them are, are, are pretty far fetched but there's obviously a reason for them to come at him and all of a sudden expose him when he had been protected all of that time. You got to realize that even the case in which he was convicted was from far back and they literally had to pull sealed documents in order to prosecute him. 
And from what I understand, the technicality on which he is being released now is because there was falsehoods from the prosecutor's office. And the prosecutor cannot be guilty of misconduct in the conviction of an individual. So that's where it's coming from. This isn't the, this isn't the Supreme Court of, uh, of uh, Pennsylvania saying uh, that he's innocent and, and, and that he's not, whatever. It's them saying that there was misconduct by the prosecutor's office at, at, at a level that calls for the conviction to be overturned. Uh, my thing is, again, feel how you want to feel. Uh, I understand it. That's probably, probably not, and I'm not exaggerating, those who have followed my work will probably vouch for this. Uh, that's probably no one who hasn't written on the collective psyche of blacks at the level that I have, in papers, in books, uh, in academic articles, in research papers. Uh, my, my theory on collective bias, uh, dominant theory, um, is actually a paper that I'm going to be republishing uh, with new findings that expands upon what I originally wrote years ago. Uh, so I understand the collective psyche of my people. I understand where it comes from. I understand why we think the way we think. My thing is, in doing so, we, we also have to be aware of while we are cheering for this, what we're doing in a more intense situation of for, for those of us who actually fought for us. That's my thing. You, you know, Bill has been outspoken against a lot of who we are. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't hold ourselves to a high standard. What I'm saying is if I'm going to be the person to tell you that, then I can't have these type of things lurking underneath. It's not that I'm perfect. It's not that I've done everything right. But there's got to be a consistency in who I am that can be respected. And I'm never placing myself above my people. I'm not better than my people. I'm functioning from a different place than a lot of my people, but I'm no better than them. I am them. They are me. We are one. Whether we want to admit it or not, while we are in definition a non-monolith, we are experiencing life as if we were. We're treated as one. We're viewed as one. We're judged as if one. And that's one of the reasons why we're so excited about him getting off. Because we, it was like we were all convicted when he was convicted. Because that's the collective psyche of the average black person. That's why when growing up I would listen to the news and they would be talking about some crime being committed and my grandmother and my grandfather would be sitting there saying, Lord, please don't let this be a black man. Why? Because it's not just on him. It's on us all. We're the only group whose reality functions that way. So I get it. The flip side of that is when one of us does something great or has a great experience, we experience it vicariously through them. Both our suffering and our victories come vicariously through the collective. And yet we remain highly ununited. That's the enigma. That's the enigma. Is that in a place where we identify with collective struggle, collective victory, collective uh, movement, we remain disconnected. I'm going to get off of here, but I just had to drop in on that. Let's not be so caught up and enamored and excited about what's going on with Bill Cosby that we lose sight of the big picture. I'm not coming with no vitriol and no hate. I didn't want the man in there under his current condition. I didn't think that he was handled in the same way that other people had done worse. See, you got him with women his age or at least adult age doing some things that it's like that whole thing with Desiree Washington back way back when with Mike Tyson or a uh, little chick, whatever her name is. Oh, I got told off about using the word chick for women. And I'm, I'm, I, 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 I was referring to her that way because of a certain reason. Uh, but with Kobe Bryant, 
you show up at, you come in through the back way at 2 o'clock in the morning. Hey, I mean, what you sneaking in somebody's room at 2 o'clock in the morning for? Again, I believe a woman has the right to say no. Even if she comes in your room at 2 o'clock in the morning and rubs up on you, I think she has the right to say no at any given point. I think that we've got to get to a point, though, where at a, at a certain point, we say, okay, what's, what's really going on? You 15 minutes into an act, and all of a sudden you, 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 you're being raped. You know, how do we define that? My thing is, luckily I'm married. And, and you know, and I know when my wife ain't feeling me, so she ain't got to worry about, you know, I, I, I'm I not pushing up on you unless we feeling each other. Husband or not, I'm not one of the people that believe you belong to me. So it's got to be mutual, even when married. You know, but I am saying that I'm seeing it from all sides. And I get I get it. The system pulled one, but he put himself in that position. And he was, before all this went down, handling my people real rough. And so I, I wasn't feeling that. I didn't want that for him because of his age, because of his wife's age and what she was going to go through. But, you know, I wasn't championing his cause because his cause was grimy. And it sends a message when you champion that to our younger heads hey man you can get down like this if no you can't get down like that ever and so that was that's my thing but my whole point is i'm more focused on the people who really put their lives on deck for the sake of the whole who got raw deals and we hardly ever hear their names And that is my concern. Let, 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 let's make some noise and, 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 and stump some ground and shake some ground about, especially Mumbia is in real bad health from what I understand. And really needs to be where he can get good, solid medical attention and have uh, exposure to the right environment for mental health. And I think that needs to be a focus of our people. You know, I, I think we need to be aware of how uh, uh, Sister Asada is being uh, pursued. And in the move, what those from the uh, move family uh, that are still locked up, I know a lot of them were released over the last six years, uh, but that whole thing, you know, you, they bomb and shoot up your place and the survivors get locked up for decades. Uh, those are the things we need to be looking at. Those are the releases we need to be celebrating. And again, you know, pers on a personal level, I'm glad dude out. But that's not a, a something I'm celebrating. I'm not putting it on my wall because Mumbia is still locked up. Some of the move... Uh, members are still locked up. That is where my mind is at. How many of those brothers, how many of the Panthers died behind prison walls on trumped up charges? That's where I'm, that's where I'm at. That's what I'm focused on. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm going to get ready to get out of here, but I just had to drop that off on you. I hope that uh, it lands on good ears. I love to have your feedback. Um, on that note, I'm checking out. Don't forget to show some love and support. We still got work to do. We're still working with a number of different families, but definitely working with uh, this primary thing on this relocation and getting this fa this young mother and her family set up, and we could really use your support. Uh, if you need more uh, information on it, you can email me directly at CEO at rickwallacephd.link. Special on that note, I'm announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. 
uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.